To achieve a fine control over your hair, you often need to use maps to drive various parameters. But using external software to paint maps can become tedious and slow down your workflow. Instead, it would be much quicker if we could just paint the maps directly onto the distribution surface inside Maya without creating any external files. And in this tutorial, we will learn how to use vertex colors to drive various parameters inside Ornatrix hair plugin for Maya. So to start, I have this fully parametric haircut. It just starts out with a scalp mesh and then we have our guides which are surface combed so we get this nice backwards hairstyle and the guides then get converted to hair which are clustered, some length is applied, some frizz is applied and finally we define the width of this hair using the render settings node. So at this point aside from surface comb node we haven't done any styling so let's see if we can change the style of this hair using just the vertex color node. So first thing let's see if we can change the distribution of this hair. Right now it is even and the same amount of hairs get generated at every single point on our scalp. To change this, first I'm going to select the scalp mesh, I'm going to right click on it and in the menu that shows up I'm going to go to our color sets and use the color set editor option to open my color set editor. Initially we don't really have any color set in this mesh but we can create a new one and we can set it to RGB parameter over here and just use the apply and close button to create this color set which will be used to drive the distribution of the hair. Just to organize things a little bit I'm going to select this color set and use the rename button over here to change it to hair density. So now that I click OK our color set is called hair density and it will be easier to identify it once we use it. Next I'm going to go to the hair from guides node and just like a lot of other parameters in Ornatrix it has a distribution channel. These channels can be used per strand channels in Ornatrix which are defined for each guide inside of your hair mesh and for that we have a separate tutorial which you can view on YouTube. YouTube and Vimeo or you can use the color map which we have just created. If you just click on this drop down list over here you can see that it is available as hair density. Once I select this all my hair goes away and the reason for that is because by default all the values inside of this channel are black and therefore they're being blocked. To fix this I'm going to select again my scalp and I'm going to right click on it and inside color sets make sure that the checkbox here is right next to hair density set and once it is selected I'm going to go to mesh display menu and inside here find the paint vertex color tool. I'm just going to pop out this little dialog here so we can see the tools that are available for us. So initially the color value is black and I'm going to change it to a white value so we can start painting. I can adjust the size of the brush using the B button and then dragging and once I have this available I can just start painting right on top of this mesh and it is going to create the areas on this mesh which are filled with hair. So again all the white areas will have hair in them, all the black areas will not have any hair in them and everything in between will have an intermediate value. So I painted this white and we get the same amount of hair as before but now we have this bald spot and if we wanted to we could leave it. But I can also set my value to a grayscale value and start painting and we get fewer hairs in these areas just because the density here is not at a hundred percent but a smaller value. I can demonstrate this by using even a darker value and if I paint you can see that some of the hairs are removed from our hairstyle. So I'm just going to use this to style my character to have all the hairs that we had before but I'm going to occlude some of the places where I don't want my hair to exist. So for example here this is probably too low for the hair to be on my character and I'm going to occlude it in this place. So just by brushing I can remove these strands over here and same goes for here and when I render my character even the dense hair that get generated for the rendering will also not be generated here because we are using the values from this map and we're not erasing these strands directly. So there is a bold spot over here I might want to fill that in with hair but then I might not want the hair to be all the way down at the bottom here. So I'm just going to increase my brush and go over this area to remove some of the hair near the bottom of the scalp over here. So next thing I'm going to change is the length of the hair. Let's give this character longer hair down the middle and make the hair a lot shorter on the sides. To do this again I'm going to create a separate map to drive the length. By selecting the base scalp mesh I'm going to use the color set editor which already has our hair density to create a new channel. I'm going to set it to RGB, use the apply and close button. Then I'm going to select the new color set and just rename it to hair length. 
So now we have two vertex color maps and we can use them interchangeably within all of the parameters in our operator. I'm going to go to my length node and inside the value channel, I'm going to select this hair length set that we have just created. Again, when I select it, all the hairs become really, really short because the values are black and it means they're being set to zero. So all the lengths right now are zero. We can fix this by selecting our base mesh over here, going to mesh display again and using the paint vertex color tool once again, to define the length. Down the middle, I'm going to make the hairs longer and I'm going to go all the way down towards the back of the character. And maybe on the sides of the character, I'm still gonna have some length to the hair, but it's not going to be as long. So I'll use a grayscale value to set it to some predefined color that I want. And I'm just going to use this color to change the length of these strands over here. And as I look, you can see that there are not as long as the ones down the middle, but they still have some length to them. And you can use any of the brush parameters over here. So you can, instead of replacing a color, add it on top of the other color. You can use different brushes, load your custom ones. So it is great to reuse a lot of these tools that Maya already offers to create your hairstyles. If you have any kind of desire to become a hairstylist, this is actually a lot of fun to do because it's almost like you get to cut this character's hair, but not quite. And once you do the cutting, you can always grow the hair back and try again. So it does become quite a bit of fun due to this non-destructive workflow and ability to undo and perform all the other operations that the real world doesn't allow you to do. So it is kind of interesting that we have created here. And just for practice, let's make these hair values clustered down the middle, but not very clustered on the sides. And again, to do this, I just select my scalp mesh. I already have this color set window open, so I'm going to use it to add a new channel. It's going to be RGB, apply and close, select my new channel, rename it. I'm going to use this hair clumping name and I'm going to go to mesh display again and open up this vertex color tool once again. Actually, it would be good to first link this to our clumping. So I'm going to go to my guide cluster node and inside the cluster channel, I'm going to select the hair clumping option. So all the clumping that is applied to hair is gone. And the reason why we have all these large swirls here is because we actually have some twist on the hair. We can remove this twist and now we can go and clump the hair that's just down the middle of the character. So I'm going to select the last use tool, which was brushing. And I will select a white value and just go down the middle of this character with my brush to create the clumps just down the middle of this character. As I do this, you can see that all these hairs that are wildly out of position are now being clumped together and being attracted to the guides that have generated them while the hairs on the side continue to be kind of messy and don't exhibit any clustering behavior. So I can continue going and apply the same logic and the same tools to the rest of my haircut and maybe give it some more parametric definitions. But I think this gives you enough of a general idea of how to use the vertex painting tools inside Maya to drive different parameters of Ornatrix. I hope that you find this useful and that you get to utilize it a lot in your own workflow. Thank you very much for watching.